Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. Go to Jeremiah. We're going to do the commentary on chapter 20. Oh, it's depressing reading Jeremiah. America... The EU, the European Union, and the UK, your United Kingdom, could sure use a Jeremiah, but uh, maybe that's uh, when the time comes, that's what the 144,000 will be doing. All right, so let's take a look. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 1. Now Pasher, the son of Immer, the priest, who was also the chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. So here, evidently, this guy's the, um, if he's not the head priest, he's in charge of the house of the Lord, you know, the temple. Verse 2, then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet, hit him, and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. Now, I don't remember if you, well, I don't know if you know what stocks were, but uh, that was a punishment that they used the pilgrims and the Puritans, they would, you know, basically stick your head and your arms in a, a piece of wood and you couldn't really move or go anywhere or do anything. Sometimes the people would throw things at you or, uh, you know, hit you or kick you or whatever. Wasn't much you could do about it. And stuck him there by the house of the Lord. So everybody going into the house of the Lord could take a look. Yeah, this is what we do to people that pronounce doom and gloom. We don't want to hear their message. Verse 3. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, the Lord hath not called thy name Pasher, but Magor Misa Abib. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror, I will make thee a terror unto thyself. So I guess that's what Magor Misa Abib means. A terror to thyself. I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Verse 5. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of the city and all the laborers thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. So not, you know, uh, I don't know if you know it, but uh, an emissary from Babylon came and the king of Judah showed him around, showed him all the treasures in the house of the Lord, showed him the king's treasures. And uh, evidently the emissary went back to Babylon and says, King of Babylon, these guys got all kinds of gold. And that was probably one of the reasons why Nebuchadnezzar wanted to uh, invade Jerusalem. 
I mean, he wanted the king's gold and treasures and the treasures in the house of the Lord. There was a lot of gold in the house of the Lord. A lot. So, let's see if I can find that verse. All right, I found it. 2 Kings chapter 20. You know, it's really wonderful that they have all this stuff online. I mean, when I was uh, in Bible college, I had to look things up manually with a book. I had a Strong's Concordance in a Bible. And I had a typewriter. I had to typewrite my reports to send in the Bible college, at least for the bachelor's degree. I think I think when I was doing the, well, when I started doing the master's degree, uh, I think I, I bought a computer and had a printer and was able to look up some stuff online and uh, copy, cut and paste, or copy and paste, I should say, made it really easy. Matter of fact, I did an entire Bible class uh, in like four days. It was like a three-day weekend plus an extra day. Of course, you know, I'm spending, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, twelve hours a day on it. But I was able to do an entire class in four days. A master's degree was uh, 20 classes. So, yeah, I couldn't do that all the time, but, you know. When I went to regular college, we didn't have... Uh, computers like you have today. We had computers, but they filled up rooms, and you only had a terminal. So, stuff like that. But today, it's so easy. All I got to do is type in uh, words and do a word search, and boom, it comes up on my online King James Bible. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And it's a big help doing these Bible studies. So, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now, Hezekiah was, I believe he was a decent king. He was a king of Judah. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amoz, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayers. Oh, I'm sorry. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Now remember, uh, Assyrian, the Assyrian Empire came before the Babylonians, and they had taken northern Israel, whose capital was Samaria, into captivity the ten northern tribes, the ten lost tribes, lost only the church world, not to God. And um, they took them away, captive, into captivity. They became slaves. Well, now they're knocking on the doorsteps of Jerusalem. And they took, uh, the Syria also took a number of cities in Judah also. So it wasn't just the ten northern tribes that they took. They took a portion of Benjamin. They took a portion of Judah and probably some Levites too. 
So there was probably all 12 tribes in the Assyrian captivity. And they never returned to the land. Unlike Judah, when Judah went into Babylonian captivity after 70 years, they returned to Jerusalem. They came back. The 10 northern tribes did not. So here it is. The Assyrian Empire has besieged and surrounded Jerusalem, and they're banging on the doors. So, verse 6. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 6. And I will add, so the Lord says, I will add unto thy days 15 years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. Now, um, the Assyrians had 185,000 troops surrounding Jerusalem. And one night, one angel struck them dead. That was the end of the Assyrian uh, siege. So, verse 7. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, now remember, this is Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah had his own book, one of the major prophets. I did a uh, commentary on the entire book of Isaiah. That took a while. All 66 chapters. And Isaiah said, this sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken and... Uh, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backwards 10 degrees. So, you know, that's sort of like daylight savings time when you're uh, going fall back. You know, here it is. It's noon, and then it goes back to being like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and then the Lord goes back 10 degrees, and now it's back to noon. So the Lord went, the, the sun went back. Instead of going forward, it went back. You know, the, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Just imagine if it was noon, and then it went to 1 o'clock, and then the 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 sun went from 1 o'clock going back to be directly overhead again. Went back to being, you know, noon. Went back 10 degrees. You'd be like, whoa, dude. That's never happened before. But let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. So they had a sundial back in them days, right? At that time, Barodach Baladad, the son of Baladad, king of Babylon. All right, so evidently, uh, this king of Babylon, before Nebuchadnezzar, uh, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Verse 13. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things. Oh, that's what you get for bragging. Yeah, let me show you all my stuff, dude. The silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah showed them not. So, not only did the king show him his silver and gold, you know, and jewels and everything else, uh, I'm sure he showed him the house of the Lord. I mean, you know, the house of the Lord had gold all over the walls and everything else. You know, this emissary from uh, 
Babylon, well, the son of Bab the king of Babylon, the son of the king of Babylon, probably went back and said, Father, look, there's so much gold in this place. Hmm. So, nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. So Hezekiah was bragging and showed them everything. Verse 14. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? Like Isaiah doesn't know. And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. Now remember, Babel or Babel means confusion. What do you where do you think that was uh where do you think that was? That was in Babylon. And he, Isaiah, said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house they have seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day, shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of of the king of Babylon. Uh, if you don't know what a eunuch is, uh, let me explain. That's where they take the guy and they go snip, snip. Because uh, the king of Babylon doesn't want uh, anybody playing with his wives. If you catch my drift. Yeah. I don't think that's a job I would particularly care for, but. And by the way, Dave, uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel, you know, the book of Daniel, he was of the princes of Judah, and he was ruled over by the, uh, well, I think they call him the governor of the eunuchs. And nowhere in the Bible does. Daniel recorded as having children. Gee, I wonder why. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might, and how he made a pool and a conduit, and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and Manasseh his son reigned in his stead. Oh boy. Now, 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 1. We're getting ready to go back to uh, Jeremiah, but I just want to read this. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. And he did that which was evil. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he had built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel and worshipped all the host of heaven, the fallen angels, and served them. Uh, Ahab had a wife named Jezebel. Perhaps you've heard of the Ahab and Jezebel. The Bible says that Ahab uh, did more to provoke the Lord to anger than all the kings that were before him. Ahab was 
bad news bears. Ahab was one of the big reasons why the Lord took northern Israel into captivity. Yeah. So, all right, let's see here. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 20 and verse 5. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city and all the labors, labors thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. And thou, Pasher, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity and thou shalt come to Babylon and there thou shalt die and shalt be buried there thou and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies so pasher prophesied lies ooh all right uh jeremiah 20 verse 7 O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily, everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. See, Jeremiah is preaching a message that nobody wants to hear and doesn't really sound like he wants to do this, but verse 9, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay so he wanted to be quiet but the fire in his bones just broke out he couldn't hold his peace you know I kind of can understand that I really I really really can for I heard the defaming of many fear on every side report say they and we will report it all my familiars watched for my halting saying peradventure he will be enticed and we shall prevail against him and we shall take our revenge on him see they're looking for an occasion to uh make problems for him verse 11 but the lord is with me as a mighty terrible one therefore my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail they shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten but, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous, and seest the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bare me be blessed. Boy, that's some harsh words. You know, cursed be the day that I was born. Can you imagine? Jeremiah probably had no friends. His family probably disowned him, and nobody liked him. Nobody liked him. I mean, 
Come on, you you get a, a Benny Hinn. Oh, God wants to bless you. And God wants you rich. And God wants you to have wealth and fame and fortune and good health. That's what they want to hear. That is exactly what they want to hear. But that's not what Jeremiah was preaching. He was, he was preaching what the Lord wanted him to teach. In Jeremiah 1, verse 4, we read, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Prophets had a very, very short lifespan, generally. Think about it. You know how many times they tried to kill Paul? They tried to kill Paul a bunch of times. Look at uh, Book of Acts 14, 19. And you know what? All these people that hate Paul and deny him, uh, you don't see them suffering for the faith. No. But listen to this. Acts 14, 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, no, Paul didn't buy any uh, Colombian gold, no, he didn't have any Mishmakan, no, 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 who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, frequent in deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. That's 39 lashes with a whip. Thrice, three times, thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A day and a night I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and, and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which cometh unto me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. In other words, uh, his handicaps. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aratos, the king, kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. That's what happens to a uh, apostle. I mean, well, apostle, but... You know, Paul was a prophet too. So,
Let's see. Jeremiah 20, verse 13. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man-child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew and repented not. Did the Lord overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh, yeah. And let them hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide, because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave. How could the mother be his grave? Well, if she died uh, before you know, he was born, or died in childbirth, his mother would have been his grave. And her womb to be always great with me. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow. You know, the life of a prophet was sorrow. Wherefore, well, when the people were in wickedness, it was. Anyways. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame. Poor Jeremiah. I can understand, sort of, kind of, a little bit how he feels. People don't want to hear this stuff. They don't want to hear it. So, all right, well, that's the end of this lesson. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.